You know, and I saw this mount in the middle of the floor, you know, saw all these bolts, and I'm like, oh, that must be for a spare tire rack. He said, dude, that's way too forward. That's where they mounted the machine gun. That's how we do it in the sound. What's going on, guys? Welcome to Rabbits Use Cars. Man, I got cameras all around me over here. I don't know. I'm zooming here, 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 here. We got a guy walking around with one. I'm just going to look at this one and keep rocking. Uh, you know, Doug Tabbitt said it best on VinWiki. It's crazy the things we run into because of the situations we put ourselves in. And, you know, it's not late breaking news, but we filmed a show for Netflix and we had a great time in El Paso, Texas. But the thing you gotta understand, you know, I was gonna be there for at least four months. And, you know, I started thinking like, you know, well, I could borrow a crew van or borrow somebody's car that drove, but, you know, you kinda need a way to go. And, uh, you know, I'm kinda used to having that freedom. So, you know, we go into Texas, and I fly there, and I'm walking at this point. Mike Coy, who's also on the show with us, he's driving around, and, and I got Mike to take me to the used car mecca of El Paso, Texas. You know, I'll be honest with you, I buy cars everywhere I go, so wouldn't it be any different here. So I'm just looking for something cool, a little run around, you know, just right here in Texas. You know, you got to think about it. While I film for a few months, sell it off, move on, whatever. So, the used car capital of El Paso is Alameda Avenue. And I'll be honest with you, as soon as you step foot on Alameda Avenue, all you have is car lots and street walkers. So, if you're looking to get fucked, this is the place to be. So, we're walking around to Mike and Wes Zachary, who owns Zachary Rod and Customs of Celeste, Texas. We were out walking down the road, and I'm literally just scanning. Yeah, you know, all these little car lots. Looking at all the Chevy Sparks, Sonics, Kia Souls. Toyotas, you know, Scions, every little cheap buy here, pay here, junky ass used car you've ever seen in your life, they got it. I'm um, just scanning, just scanning. And over to the side, I noticed there was a shop on the side of the road, and I caught the ass end of a gorgeous lifted two door blazer. You know, like an OBS style blazer. And I mean, I'm like, man. So I start walking into this shop, and there was a guy who had the hood up, and he was working on it. And this blazer was clean as a pin, white, had a lift, big wheels, tires on it. And I uh, walked up to him and said, man, that's a good looking blazer. He said, yeah, the guy that owns this thing, this is his baby. I'm um, actually getting it ready so he can sell it. And uh, he got to do a few things to it to get it ready to sell. And I'm like, man, you know, I said, I'll tell you what, I'd love to, you know, love to talk to this guy. I said, what are you doing with this thing? So I'll be honest with you, he said, the brakes got real low on it. It ended up the master cylinder went out. So I'm putting a new master cylinder on it, just bleeding the brakes. I'm going and service it while I got it. And he goes, so I walked around this thing. I said, you mind if I open the doors? So I open the doors and look inside. I mean, this thing's just clean as a pin. It's a 96. I'm assuming it was a title. It was actually a two-door blazer. It was actually sold new in Mexico. They kept the blazer title in Mexico all the way through the 90s, where here in the U.S. they stopped in 92 with a blazer. Um, but anyway, you know, this thing was just a killer clean truck. Like I said, gray cloth inside, like any 96 OBS inside. Uh, you know, gray cloth. Um, had an eight-inch Pro Comp lift. You know, 37 inch Toyo tires, you know, 17 inch race line wheels. I mean, it was like a, a neat truck, you know, and it was done, you know, it was like white with the gray on the bottom and the gray grill and bumpers. So I kind of had the sport look going a little bit. Just a clean truck. All, you know, all the little things you look for perfect dash, you know, nice lights. And the big thing on these is rust. And that's the one thing El Paso doesn't have. Um, you got to think about it, it's an extremely dry climate. You're in the middle of the damn desert. So rust really isn't that big of a deal. And this thing was. Perfect. And, and that was the thing. I mean, all your Georgian rockers, quarters, everything lower, under the bottom. This thing was clean as a pin. For a 96 model, it was extremely clean. And, you know, the truck has obviously been repainted and, and it's been dolled up, you know. And it was, you know, it's, it, was, it wasn't a survivor. This was, you know, somebody's baby. Somebody spent some money and time in this thing. So I told him I left my number with the mechanic and he goes, well, the guy that owns it, he doesn't speak English. And, uh, and he said, well, I said, if you don't mind, you know, kind of interpreting between us, you know, I'd love to try to get this thing bought. Because, I mean, I'll be honest with you, out of everything I've seen, that was the only thing that really caught my eye. And um, so he calls me back the next day and says, the guy wants to sell it. You want to come back down to the shop and he can meet us here. Still don't know what he's asking for. Don't really know a lot of the history on the truck. Yeah, you know, so we get there and I want to tell you something. The best way to describe the way this guy looked, <laughs> You gotta think about it. He had a leather vest on, a snake skin boots, got the bolo. Literally, he looks like a dark ice air freshener smells. Sure enough, you know, you've got a seller that doesn't know English 
you've got a buyer that only knows the cuss words in Spanish, and we've got this guy trying to put us together in between this mechanic. And, you know, the mechanic's trying to answer my questions about it. You know, the AC works, yes, all the AC's been gone through. I replaced all the AC stuff on it. This and this and going back and forth and this and run and drive out good, you know, all suspension stuff. Brakes are on kill now. He's, yes, stops on a dime. And we're going back and forth. I mean, this thing's just, I mean, the more you look at it, the slicker it gets. I mean, it's just a nice truck. Um, you know what I mean? I'm like, just like, I mean, I'm just like really salivating because I'll be honest with you, this thing on this side of the country they would go ape shit over it. I mean, because you just don't see these trucks this nice with no rust. Um, and I'm just like, man, like, I want to get this thing bought. You know, he asked the guy what he wanted for it. The mechanic did. And he goes, he tells him something. And he was about 3000 higher than what I wanted to pay. Um, and, you know, you got to think, when you're in a situation like this, when you're talking through someone else, you got to do everything you can to get the seller's attention. Let him know you're serious about buying a car. So when you pull out a rack, he's like, ooh, this guy's eyes totally changed. And he goes, we can do that. So it's so funny. You know, it tickles me. And I say this all the time. It's funny how a little greenery always changes the scenery. So we got the little blazer bought. And this thing is, like I said, just jam up awesome. Um, you know, driving it around. I'll be honest with you, we all took it out that night and you know, went out to dinner, riding around this thing, and I mean, driving over stuff. And you know, you got to think about it, the trailer park comes out in me with anything like that. So, naturally, any obstacle in a mall parking lot, I'm going to try to drive over, or any sidewalk or curb. Um, and, you know, hell with a regular parking spot. This thing's so wide, it barely fit a parking spot. So, you just make it park it wherever you want. So, you just drive it up on something and hop out. Um, and I loved it. I mean, this thing's just super cool. Four-wheel drive in the floor, like everything everybody would want. Your 350 Vortec, literally the best of OBS stuff as this thing has. And I'm like, man, I'm just loving it. And this thing hits the road good. You know, you gotta think about it. a lot of lifted trucks don't really drive out that great. And this thing's 70 mile an hour down I-10. This thing's just cruising, just floating down the road. You know, it's got all the nitro shocks on and all that crap. But this thing, I mean, like it rides and drives out good. Hell, the tires are even quiet on it. Of course, there again, those Toyota tires are really like $1,700 for a set of those by themselves. But, and, I mean, it's sitting knee deep in rubber. I'm like, it's a nice truck. And I'll be honest with you, other than all the radio stations being preset to Spanish networks, that was my only qualm with the whole damn truck driving down the road. I mean, this thing was just immaculate. I mean, like, I was seriously impressed with it. You know, I mean, I usually can nitpick a vehicle pretty quick. And I'll be honest with you, this one's pretty sharp. I mean, interior was gorgeous. I mean, if this thing was a, a regular cab short bed OBS, I mean, it'd be a $25,000 truck. And, you know, I'm cruising around this thing and I'm just loving it. And, you know, like I said, we went out to dinner that night in, and hell, I drove it every day for a couple weeks. And this thing was just, I mean, just the more I drove it, hell, the more I liked it. You know, and it just, just, it's just a great truck, air blew ice cold in it, you know, and like I said, once I got the whole radio situation straightened out and got off of living La Vida Loca stuff, we were gold. And I mean, just had a great time with this thing. Everybody was like, hey, you like your blazer? And everywhere you went with it, you know, all the guys on the set, man, look at that big ass blazer. This thing's wild, just hop out of it. You know, everybody else is riding around with their Kia Souls and, you know, Toyota Tercels and Priuses. And here I come pulling up in this big blazer. I mean, I love it. Um, I mean, literally, past everything but a gas station. But, Fun ride, nonetheless. I didn't buy it for fuel fish, I bought it for cool. And, uh, and it was definitely a fun ride. So, we're building a car for the show, and I can't really tell you much about that right now, but we were building a car for the show. It was a big lifted four-wheel drive vehicle. Um, and four-wheel drive stuff is huge in that area. There's four-wheel drive shops everywhere down in El Paso. And uh, there was this one really big one off 10, and uh, we needed a few parts. I said, hell, I'll go run and get them. I wasn't filming that day. I said, hell, I'm gonna drive my blazer down there, show out a little bit. So you know what, I come whipping in my little blazer into the four wheel drive shop and I hop out of this thing and walk on in and talk to the guys at the parts counter for a minute and like, hey, we need this, this, this. Oh yeah, we can fix you right up. And they walked to the back and they grabbed a double handful of parts we needed. And uh, hell, you know, he's helped me carry it all out. You know, he's got something, I got something, we're walking out. He said, what you driving? I said, that little blazer right there. He said, man, I know that truck real well. I said, really? I said, I just bought a few weeks back. And he goes, yeah. He goes, I bet you I know more, way more about that blazer than you do. And I said, well, it's very possible. Like I said, I haven't owned it that long. So, you know, we opened up the back hatch. You know, it's got, uh, it didn't have barn doors on it. It's actually got, you know, the tailgate with the door that comes up or the window that goes up. So, you know, open up the back hatch and, uh, you know, we throw the parts in the back of it. He said, like, 
how about all those bolts in the floor? And then, you know, I never really paid that much attention to it. It didn't have a rubber mat back there. It was carpet. But there was probably 10 3 8 bolts with big washers bolted into the center of the floor like in a square. And I didn't know if it was some, for some kind of tire rack. And that's what I said. I said, maybe some kind of wild tire rack. He goes, it's too far forward. He said, that can't be a tire rack. You wouldn't be able to shut the back door. And he said, he goes, oh, don't worry. There's more. And I started like, hmm. I didn't think anything about it, you know, so we shut the hatch. He goes, pop hood on this thing. He goes, so you gotta understand, we put the lift that's under this. It was already lifted when it came in and it was shot. And he said, everything was wore out, all the bushings, all that stuff. And he said, this thing had just come out of the body shop when they brought it to us. And he said, we put an all new lift under it. We replaced all the bushings under this thing. He said, every suspension component on this thing is brand new. And, uh, and I said, man, that's awesome. He goes, yeah, check it out. So I pop the hood, he opens the hood and you know, a Chevrolet truck, 96 or 88 through 98, you know, the fender actually bolts to the inner structure there. You know, the inner structure is actually welded to the firewall. And all your front end components hang off of that. So, you know, the fender's bolted in. It's got 10 milliliter bolts running up there, you know, with the fender bolted on. Well, on the inside of that inner fender, you know, that's where, you know, you're, you got your inner fender there, but you also have your washer tank, you know, the computer. Everything's bolted on those sides, you know, on the left and the right hand side. So he pulls the washer tank back, you know, it's because it's plastic, it's like a little tab. So he pulls it back, he says, look up there. And you look, there was two bullet holes. I've seen a lot of bullet holes in all the bills of my life. I knew exactly what it, was, what it was when I saw it. I'm like, man, that's crazy, two bullet holes, you know? So somebody obviously put a fender on it, but that inner structure had two holes through it. I said, man, that's interesting. And he said, oh yeah. He said, don't worry, there's more. He goes. He opens up the door on it, and it had Nerf bars on the sides, and he steps up on the Nerf bar. I mean, you gotta keep in mind, this thing's hell eight foot tall. So we, uh, you know, I said, hop up here. So I hop up on the Nerf bar and I look, and you can see where there's a dent in the roof, but what it was is actually a hole that they filled in. And it was going kind of like sideways out the side of the top. And it was right there where the rat roof rack was, right in the, not right in the center, kind of off to one side. And he said, that wasn't an antenna, I'll tell you that. I'm like. So we've got a truck with two bullet holes in the top, or two bullet holes in the front fender, a bullet hole in the top, and he said, the thing that was crazy was this thing didn't have a headliner in it when it came in. And he said, so we saw from the other side, it was definitely a bullet hole. I'm like, man, that's insane. And he said, and then you got that, that mount in the back. I'm like, I wonder what that could be. He goes, have you ever seen a machine gun mount before? Like on like an army Jeep or something? I'm like, no way. You know, but the more this guy talked, the more I was thinking that this thing wasn't previously owned by the Boy Scouts. You know, and I'm like, you know, that's a little crazy. And it did come from Mexico, sold New Mexico. And, uh, you know, I'm thinking, man, that's, that's, that's kind of crazy right there, you know? And then, you know, that gets you looking, that gets you thinking. And if you Google cartel vehicles, or if you Google, you know, just cartel in general, what do they drive? White? Lifted four-wheel drive, Chevrolet trucks, Tahoes, and Blazers, and Suburbans. That's their thing. I'm like, man, I didn't know that. Another funny with it, actually. So we started driving, and hell, I didn't think nothing about it, but I love it. I mean, it was a great truck. I mean, I'm not worried about any of that stuff. I mean, hell, I've owned vehicles with a shady pass before. Usually, I'm the guy with the shady pass that owns it. But hell, it sounds like these guys make me look like somebody to be sitting in front of Ed Bowley in a church. But hey, whatever. I kind of like a little street cred in my vehicles. So anyway, we're riding around. We had a show sponsor that was local. He's having a big cookout. It was a gorgeous Saturday afternoon. Just cleaned my little blazer up, had her spotless. You know what? Drove the blazer up to his house. He's got this gorgeous house in West El Paso. He's got a little farm, got miniature horses, all kinds of stuff. Well, anyway, I come pulling up. Yeah, of course, this big ass blazer. So I just parked right in front of his house on the side of the road. Hop out, you know, enjoying the barbecue. and. All this stuff. Well, next thing you know, the guy that's putting on the barbecue, his phone rings. He goes, man, that's crazy. And he goes, well, he sounds nothing. And, uh, you know, we keep eating barbecue, laughing, cutting up. Everybody from the show's there, camera guys, and, of course, all of us on the show there. And we're just having a blast. You're just laughing, cutting up, whatever. And then the guy that was putting on the barbecue walks us out. He goes, who the hell's driving that blazer? I said, that's mine. He goes, I took two phone calls from my neighbors want to know why I have a cartel guy here at my house. And I'm like, what's the deal 
what's I mean, what screams cartel is thing? I mean, it's a gorgeous white blazer. Like, like, I don't understand. I mean, and then the more you get to thinking about it, there was not another white blazer anywhere in that town. Like that thing stuck out no matter where you took it. Um, but I mean, it, it just blew my mind that people like instantly from that thought this was a cartel vehicle. But and then I started thinking about my buddy at the four wheel drive shop. And then I started thinking about the guy you know, when I bought it. And I'm thinking, hmm. You know, but at the end of the day, you know what, that was a great vehicle for me. I drove this thing for three months. And I'll be honest with you, the apartment I was staying at, I would have kept it. I found a really badass little Corvette. You know, I want to switch it up a little bit. You know, something I could pop the top in. So I sold the Blazer while I was down there. I ended up going to Lubbock, Texas. They loved it. And, uh, you know, I moved on to the next vehicle and drove a C5 Corvette for the rest of the time we were there filming. But, you know, it, it blows my mind that literally I hadn't been in town 24 hours, and this, out of all the cars in El Paso, this is what I'm drawn to. So maybe I'm the problem. Who knows? You be the judge. Guys, we'll catch you next time at Rabbit's Used Cars. <laughs> <laughs>